This is an extraordinary piece of video. You're looking at a mantis shrimp that's just a few weeks old, about the size of a grain of rice. It's the larval version of a species similar to this, the famous peacock mantis shrimp. It's a shrimp that lives its adult life amongst the coral with an ultra-fast modified claw capable of punching through snail shells. But this baby version doesn't do any of that. Instead, it wields a lightning-fast spearing appendage to grab and puncture tiny prey while swimming through the open ocean. Up until a year or so ago, the strikes of these tiny ocean predators were largely unstudied. Whenever I publish a video with slow motion footage of a fast insect, I often get comments like these, what about mantis shrimp? Well, just down the road at Duke University, there's a lab that studies both mantis shrimp and snapping shrimp, using high-speed video to record and analyze their strikes. Recently, I've been working with a researcher from that lab, Jacob, and he took me over there to get a behind the scenes look at how they film these organisms and to learn a little bit about what he's discovered about those larval mantis shrimp. So we know a lot about adult mantis shrimp strikes. They've been one of the most studied high acceleration systems. However, we didn't know when this mechanism emerged. I mean, these organisms go through their own life history. They hatch from eggs. They move out into the pelagic zone as these larval mantis shrimp. And they don't have the same smashing appendage that the adults do. Instead, they have a spearing appendage that they use to capture other larval pelagic organisms so they can feed while they're out in that, in that uh, environment. I mean, these larval mantis shrimp are at the millimeter scale and it's, really hard to work at that size scale. So it took uh, many years. I mean, it took me two years to do this project from the start from when we first set out to do it until we were able to troubleshoot the entire process and figure out a way to actually get this, this research done. So this is where we house our mantis shrimp and our snapping shrimp. In these bigger tanks, we have the larger snapping shrimp and mantis shrimp. They're a little hard to see just because they tend to burrow. They hang out underneath little PVC pipes that we give them, or they make little burrows inside of uh, the coral or the sand that we offer. Um, these uh, tanks on top are actually filled with mantis shrimp or uh, juvenile snapping shrimp that are too small for our system. They would basically just get sucked up into filters that we have, so uh, they have to be housed outside. Right now, we don't have any larval mantis shrimp, um, because they only last inside their larval form for roughly a month. Uh, so what we do have are these tiny adult mantis shrimp that are a little bit older and a good example for us to use on how to study these tiny organisms. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the adult mantis shrimp, isolate it, um, and then use just a small dab of super glue that I will then attach to uh, the back of a toothpick and then I will very carefully glue on the back of the mantis shrimp um, and position it inside our little apparatus so we can, that we can zoom in. Being able to visualize ultra fast movement in a grain of rice as it's swimming through the water is just an impossible task. So our first thing that we had to do was learn how to constrain them in a spot. Uh, so as long as we're careful, this is completely harmless to the animal. Um, and they can continue to live with a little dab of superglue on the back of their carapace until they molt the next time. So what I'm gonna do first is set up the, our, our um, 80-20 uh, setup. I call it the oil rig. You'll see why in a second. Um, I'll build this up, our little apparatus that allows us to suspend our larval mantis shrimp in a little uh, container of water. Um, then I'll set up our high-speed video camera, connect it to our computer, and then attach our um, K2 infinity lens that allows us to zoom in to the millimeter scale of this type of movement. Uh, so I'll start building here, and then it'll take me uh, quite a few minutes to set up all this. I am recording. And I have to jump from over here to over here. Uh, and if I, I could set up like a little trigger system, but uh, that would take too long. Oh, yeah, I got a strike. You can see actually the first appendage on the opposite side go first, and then the appendage we're focused on follow just after. So what we've zoomed in here is just and focused on a, an adult mantis shrimp strike. The larval mantis shrimp, the entire body would be fitting inside where this appendage is. 
we didn't know how fast these larval management strikes were going to be. I predicted that the smaller larvae were going to accelerate their strikes much faster than the adults. However, when I put them in front of the camera and captured these strikes, I found that they were only producing accelerations roughly on par with the adults, which was pretty surprising. One reason potentially why they aren't striking as fast is because they just live very different lives. I mean, those adults living in those coral habitats, smashing open uh, prey, these larvae don't need to do that. They don't need to be producing those forces in order to smash open any objects. All they need to do is be faster than the things around them in order to capture them. Some of the most interesting things I think here are how small these mantis shrimp are. They're the size of a grain of rice moving through the open ocean using these incredibly powerful raptorial appendages and being able to capture that, that movement and describe that behavior was a technical challenge that I, uh, I was really excited about trying to, trying to do. To really set out, can, how can I make a contribution to this field of uh, ultra-fast movement? I hope you enjoyed that behind-the-scenes look at what it's like to study these ultra-fast shrimp. If you want to learn more about Jacob's research or any of the other projects happening in Professor Sheila Paddock's lab, check the video description below. Thanks for watching.